ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فهو المهتدي ومن يضلل فلا هادي له اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له اشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار before we start inshallah uh, we make dua for our brothers and sisters in all over the world and don't get caught with one situation in one place you have brothers and sisters who are oppressed all over the world so inshallah what's happening now in libya we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect the brothers and the sisters there and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to deal himself with the tyrant and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to yani keep this tyrant and his harm away from the muslims and we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show us his ayat in this person and in every person who dares to harm the muslims anywhere in the world and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our brothers and sisters in Iraq and Afghanistan and in, in Palestine and in everywhere in the world, huh? in Chechnya, everywhere you can think about where the Muslims are oppressed. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them. And wallahi, يعني, the, the, the victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it's very sad and it's very, uh, يعني, reaches the point of disgust, huh? the point of disgust. disgust. When you see how some Muslims uh, sending out uh, messages and petitions for them begging President Obama huh, to take actions and to save the Muslims from the oppressor. And how others demonstrate and protest in front of the White House. And wallahi, يعني, if they would have turned their faces to Allah, that would have been sufficient to them. And يعني, the Muslims need to, to, to get out of this uh, mentality asking people to take care of, of what belongs to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can do that. You can do that. You just need to, to do your job and need to do what you're supposed to be doing. But turning your face to the United Nations, uh, we tend to forget يعني, very quick. We are, we are Muslims tend to forget very quickly that يعني, uh, this same person that they're begging, uh, they want him to save the Muslims there. But his armies is, are the ones killing the Muslims in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, we tend to forget that. And they, they are, the United Nations are the same ones who gave, who gave country for the Jews in Palestine, and they still support. And a few days ago, they used the, this country used the veto uh, against, uh, for the settlement uh, for the Jews in Palestine, and yet they are the middleman between the, in the peace treaty between the Palestinians and the, the Israelis. Yeah, and it's, it's pathetic uh, how the Muslims still put their hopes huh, in the non-Muslims and they put their hopes in other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we make dua and we do our best and now there are some uh, food drives and some help drives to help the brothers in, in Libya. But again, يعني, the Muslims are, are still asleep and still thinking Libya is the only problem we have. There are Muslims being tortured and suffering all over. At least the Libyans have support in their country. There are Muslims somewhere in the world don't have any support from anyone. So let's يعني, not tend to forget the rest of the Muslims with this calamity. Also, uh, and it was brought to my attention last week how some uh, a woman, uh, non-Muslim woman, came to the sister side yesterday uh, last week. Huh? Uh, I don't know if she was interested in Islam or just came to listen or whatever. And she was, yeah, and he dressed uh, improbably, uh, yeah, and he, with a short skirt as they described it. 
and then uh, there was a lot of tension in the sister side and a lot of uh, condemnation and a lot of uh, pressure and uh, the atmosphere became charged how, how can she come like that and yani, to the point where they drove her out and she left even before she listened to the talk or listened to the lecture and I say yani, uh, and I ask one question huh? I ask one question a Muslim woman with a skirt or a Kafir woman with a skirt we have to be wise yani, for those who were offended for the way she was dressed do you don't see that on the street you don't see that in your working place or wherever you are. You don't see that on the billboards and everywhere you go. You were always uh, righteous. You were always on the straight path if you think you are right now. This is how you were before. And maybe some of you and some of us were worse than her. Maybe she doesn't know. She's not even Muslim. It happened that she had to be dressed as a Muslim and hijab, she's not a Muslim. Someone came to you. She doesn't know. She has no clue. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala drove her to you. That's how you act and that's how you react. Let her be dressed. She's sitting with the woman. Let her be dressed like that. Isn't it the very first thing that the Prophet ﷺ teaches us and teaches his messengers and his ambassadors? فَلْيَكُنْ أَوَّلَ مَا تَدْعُوهُمْ إِلَيْهِ شَهَادَةً لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ It wasn't first thing you invite them to is hijab and first thing is modesty and first thing stop riba and first thing stop makeup and first thing stop this Let the first thing you invite them to is لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Get them to the to tawheed to the meaning of لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah Then you can do everything else with them they were Sahaba who lied. They were Sahaba who committed zina. They were Sahaba who drank alcohol. Yet we still, when we say their names, we say radiyallahu anh. They're humans. They made mistakes. Someone who's not Muslim, you have to look at them with the eye of mercy, not the eye of arrogance. That you're better than them. And listen and, and, and stop talking and listen. This is an advice because this woman, if she never comes back or she came to hear the word of Allah and she never comes back, I promise you on your neck she will be hanging on the day of judgment. For what? Would you do the same thing with one of your relatives who is not Muslim? Open your heart. Show mercy. We're talking about the names of Allah Rahman. We spoke for a few weeks about the meaning of Rahman, the merciful. And we said how the Prophet said, He who shows no mercy to people, Allah will show him no mercy. Remember that. We don't come here and talk just يعني, to, to have fun. Or because we have free time. Listen and practice. When you see people like that, you have mercy on them. Not a, not a look of arrogance and a look of disgust. And yeah, we are disgusted of their reactions and their behaviors. But at the end of the day, we have to have mercy toward them because we don't want them to die, to die like that. But you, they come to us, Allah, drive this rizq to you. And that's what you do. So let's be aware, let's be smart, let's be intelligent. Huh? In the way we invite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيدَ الْقَلْبِ لَنْ فَضُّوا مِنْ حَوْلِكَ And if you were harsh, huh? heartless, huh? badly mannered, they would have dispersed away from you. They would have left you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised his messenger with the best manners. وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ And indeed you are at a great level of manners. Manners. إِنَّمَا بُعِثْتُ لِأُتَمِّمَ مَكَارِمَ الْأَخْلَاقِ The Prophet said, I was indeed sent to fulfill or complete the best manners, to perfect manners. And we are the, 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 the heirs, the inheritors of Muhammad وَلَا يَكُونُ الرَّجُلُ مِنْ أَتْبَاعِ النَّبِيِّ صلى الله عليه وسلم حَقًّا حَتَّى يَدْعُوا إِلَى مَا دَعَى إِلَيْهِ النَّبِيِّ عَلَى بَصِيرٍ قُلْ هَذِهِ سَبِيلَ أَدْعُوا لَلَّهِ عَلَى بَصِيرٍ 
You cannot be truly from amongst the followers of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam until you invite to what he invited to, with the right understanding, the right way. There's adab, there's manners. So inshallah this doesn't happen and you reevaluate yourself. You rethink how you behave. Very important. Tonight, inshallah, we continue with Al Aziz, name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al Aziz. And we have talked a little bit about it last time. And we said that Al Izza comes from Al Mana'a, Al Quwa, Al Ghalaba, Al Shidda, Al Rafa. So all this fall in the meaning of the name Al Aziz as we have explained last time. And we said this name is mentioned in the Quran in abundance, 92 times. In the Quran, you find the name Al Aziz, but sometimes by itself and sometimes uh, in conjugation with another name of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we also said, talked about the meaning of this name in regard to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we started talking about the benefits that we gain. Huh? The benefits that we gain as believers from the name Al-Aziz, from Bismillah Al-Aziz. And we said believing in the name of Allah Al-Aziz should give the believer a lot of confidence and a lot of thiqa and a lot of, of, of uh, trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give him a lot of strength that no one has the power to harm him. If he knows that Allah Al-Aziz is on his side. Huh? We know al izza is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of al izza all the honor is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All the power is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All mightiness is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I have Allah on my side, huh, then what should I be afraid of? He's the one who takes and gives. He's the one who gives honor and takes away honor. So why is it should I be afraid of anyone who claims to be aziz? Why should I be afraid of anyone who claims to have power? Why should I have or should be afraid of someone, of anyone who claims to have authority? If I know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-Aziz is over all of them. So once you understand this name, you get to live your life in a peace, with a peace of mind. You speak the truth and you don't mind. You don't mind. You're not worried for your, for your paycheck. You're not worried for your job. You're not worried for your family. You're not worried for that. Even if they're gonna, yeah, if my neck or my head will fly off my body, let it be. Huh? And the best and the highest level of jihad is to say the word of the truth in front of a tyrant. So the point is, he's not worried that he's gonna lose his life. He's not worried that no one will take care of his kids after his death. لا. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indeed used him to take care of those kids. Huh? He's not the provider. He's not the sustainer. He's not the razzaq. Huh? So it's very important to understand. Once you understand the aziz, then you don't care anymore about huh, being afraid of saying, of saying the truth. And we see throughout yani the best example of those, the prophets of Allah. The prophets of Allah, none of them, if you look, had يعني, uh, a very easy uh, message. No one came to his people, he said, Allah telling me to invite you to La ilaha illallah. They said, La ilaha illallah. And, uh, La. and they plotted for them, and they gave them hard time, and they tried to kill them, and they killed some of them back and forth. But at the end, the word of Allah prevails. Why? The prophets of Allah prevail. Why? Because Allah with them. Because Al Aziz with them. Because always you, you find يعني, the people who object, mainly the prophets of Allah and the messengers of Allah, huh? the people of authority, huh? the people of power, the people who think they are Izza. Huh? How can we leave all this for your God that we don't even see? We are this, we are the president, we are the kings, we are the leaders, we are this, we are that. They are the objectors. Because we know in the story of, of uh, Hiraq, uh, when he called uh, Abu Sufyan in the beginning of the message, and he asked him about the, this man, Muhammad Wasallam, and one of the questions he asked him, he said, who follow him? Uh, who, fa who are the people who follow him? He said, the poor. He said, indeed, those are the followers of the prophets. The poor. 
because the rich are arrogant. Usually, إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمَ رَبُّكْ They're arrogant. The rich ones are arrogant. They think they're powerful and they're a'izza and they're honorable and they don't need to bring themselves to that level. Yeah? As some of the, of the kuffar objected on the salah, he said, how can I make salah the way you guys pray at the time of the Prophet Sallam, and make my behind higher than my head yeah? as when you go for sujood. Look at the mentality. Uh, the, the stink mentality. So it's very important to understand that the prophets of Allah didn't have it easy. They had to struggle and they had to suffer. Throughout all the prophets, from يعني, Nuh السلام, even Adam, they all suffered. Musa السلام, uh, Fir'aun, who thought he was God, uh, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes him raise, makes him raise the person who's going to destroy his king. That is Al-Aziz. Only Al-Aziz can do that. Only Allah. Yusuf alayhi salam, his brothers plot for him. They couldn't kill him. They wanted to kill him. They couldn't kill him. Allah didn't want, him, didn't want them to kill him. They wanted to kill him. Then they suggested the will. Huh? Al-Jub. So they throw him in Al-Jub. And always remember, if you got something precious, if you got a jewel, huh? if you got uh, a diamond that is very expensive, you usually wrap it. Wrap it with a sheet, of, of, uh, with a sheet or with, with, with the fabric that is not worth anything. If you have something precious, you don't wrap it with something precious too. Uh, to, to bring attention to it. And that's what Allah did with Yusuf. He took him and he threw him in a job, in, in a well. So he wrapped this precious Yusuf with that, with the darkness of the well. Then he becomes what? Aziz. He is raised in the house of Al-Aziz. Aziz Masr. Huh? He's raised in there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Al-Aziz does what he wants. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted Yusuf to reach that level. So he made those who hated him to help him get there. Only Al-Aziz would do that. Just the same thing with Musa. Fir'aun killing the, the males. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dedicate the females to raise you Musa. Look in Surah Al-Qasas, we said this. يُقَتِّلُ أَبْنَاهُمْ وَيَسْتَحِيِّ نِسَاهُمْ He's killing the boys because he was told that the boys, one of them will, be, will destroy your kingdom. So if you look in the story of Al-Qasas, in Surah Al-Qasas, you find, okay, you want to kill the males and spare the females, then we're going to use the females to raise Musa. So first, his mother. Second, the wife of Musa, the wife of Fir'aun. Third, his sister, Faqussi. Fourth, the daughter of Shu'aib, who becomes his wife, فَجَاءَتُ إِحْدَاهُمَا تَمْشِي عَلَى اسْتِحِيَةٍ Kill the males? We got the females, what do you think? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala plans what he wants. Only Al-Aziz would do, would do that. And Isa alayhi salam, the same thing. Isa alayhi salam, Jesus, they wanted to kill him. They all plotted against him. The Jews with the Romans plotted against him to kill him. Huh? And that is Da'b al-Yahud, Daiman. It's not like he's, call, he's telling us to believe in our book. He's telling the people to believe in our book. We're going to just change new things. Even though they've been changing as they wish. Uh, since Musa, they changed as they wish. Over 700 years, I think, that the, the, the Torah was written. After Musa. And they've been changing as they wish. <coughs> so now Isa a.s. comes. And he's telling the people, you need to believe in the Torah. And then, I have something new with it. La, let's kill him. So they ally with who? With the kuffar. They ally with the mushrikeen. With the Romans. Pagans. And that's what they do with the believers. Always. They ally together against the believers. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. مَا يَوَدُّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ وَدَّ كَثِيرٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ ما يود كثير من أهل الكتاب ولا المشركين أن ينزل عليكم من خير من ربكم أهل الكتاب والمشركين 
أهل الكتاب طب احنا we are the same book we call for the same God they don't want anything good to happen to us we're closer to them than the pagans the Muslims are closer, closer to the Jews and Christians than the pagans yet they still allied with them so it's very important to understand Isa alayhi salam that's what they did the Jews ally with the pagans against him to kill him alayhi salam wa ala rasulina salam they want to kill him but Al Aziz got different word Al Aziz Allah wanted something else wa ma qataluhu wa ma salabuhu they neither killed him nor crucified him Allah Al Aziz wanted something else they put from within them, from amongst his disciples, someone, huh? Judah, to tell them where he is. And this Judah doesn't know that he's destroying his life. He doesn't know that Allah will put him huh? to be crucified instead of Isa alayhi salam. Aziz. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the support to his servants. You just need to trust in him. They need to believe, to believe in him. And the story of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam is the greatest example for this, for understanding the meaning of Al-Aziz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also one of the things you learn from the name Al-Aziz, that he who wants Al-Izz, and arad Al-Izzah fi dunya wal-akhira fala izzah illa billah. Khalas. That is the end, that's the bottom line. He who wants on in this dunya, in this life, you want to be respectful, you want to be powerful, you want to be honorable, huh? you want to have high status in this dunya, you want the same thing in the akhirah, in the hereafter, through Allah. Nothing else. Nothing else and study history. Huh? No one ever reached thought to a point, reach a point where he thought, that's it, I did it on my own. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring him down. Will bring him down. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear in the Quran. He said, قُلِ اللَّهُمَّ مَالِكَ الْمُلْكِ تُؤْتِ الْمُلْكَ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتَنْزِعُ الْمُلْكَ مِنْ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُعِزُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ وَتُذِلُّ مَنْ تَشَاءُ Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one, tells his messenger to say, Malik al-Mulk, the owner of all kingdom. You give authority to whomever you want, and you take it away from whomever you want, and you honor whomever you want, and you humiliate whomever you want. Ibad Allah, don't think that what happened in, 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 in Egypt and Tunisia and it's happening in Libya, don't think this is something in you. Don't think that this person coming out and he said, I'm going to destroy everyone and I will not leave my, my, my throne. Don't think no one did it before. Al Fatimiyin, when they, when, they, when they built Cairo, huh? Fatimiyin, Al Ubaidiyin, Al Ismailiyya, they are the ones, it was, an, it was يعني, a period of, of, of history. They came from, from West Africa, from, from Morocco, and they built Cairo. They were the ones who built Cairo. They called themselves, huh? they, they used to call themselves Khulafa. And they are يعني, away from that. There's one of them, one of their Khulafa, supposedly, when the poet uh, told him, uh, لا, uh, That's how they believed. That's the level they reached. Those Ismailiyya, even their kuffar in the, in, in the eyes of, of al-Rafidha, of al the other Shia of Iran, they look at al-Ismailiyya as kuffar, where they split at one of the Imams. But the point is, huh, this, their Khalifa, when they built Cairo, they are the ones who built Cairo, when, when they, they revolt against him. The Egyptians, they were the people who were Sunnah, and he was Shia, but they revolt because of their oppression and their tyranny and all that. You know what he did? He got out of Cairo. And he ordered for the whole city to be burned with the people. He burned the city with the people, with everything in it. Then when it was done, when the fire died out, 
he ordered for it to be rebuilt. Huh. For those people, it's the killing, huh? killing people is not, uh, as they used to say, قتل الناس عند الحجاج كقتل الدجاج. It didn't matter, يعني. The tyrant doesn't care it's a blood or not. والله, I look what's happening and I, I think about Uthman. Uthman bin Affan رضي الله عنه. والله, if Uthman would have killed everyone, Allah would have not, يعني Allah would have forgiven. ما ضر Uthman ما فعل بعد اليوم. The Prophet ﷺ, when he talked about Uthman, he said nothing should harm Uthman after today, whatever he does. Yet Uthman the Khalifa, and he's on the truth, and he's on the Quran, and he's on the Sunnah, and he has the support of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. Yet when Khawarij go against him, Khawarij, huh? the Prophet ﷺ said, لَإِنْ أَدْرَكْتُمْ لَوْ قَتْلَنَّهُمْ قَتْلَ عَادٍ خوارج ها تحقرون صلاتكم إلى صلاتهم لا يقرؤون القرآن لا لا يجاوز حناجرهم يمرقون من الدين كرمي كمرق الرمي السهم من الرمي. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said I would if I witness them he told about them if I witness them I'll kill them I'll destroy them. Yet they go against Uthman رضي الله عنه. And when the Sahaba come to him with their sword and they say, let us fight them, he said, Wallahi, I will not fight them. I would be afraid to face Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a tear or with a blood, a drop of blood in my neck regarding a Muslim. And they killed him while he was fasting and while he was reading the Quran and the page his blood on, فَسَيَكْفِيكَهُمُ Allah. He had the night before the dream with the Prophet ﷺ telling him, Aftar ma'ana liyawma ya Uthman. Break your fast with us today, Uthman. He had dream of the Prophet ﷺ. Break your fast today with us. Khariji, who was stabbing him until then, he said, he stabbed him ten times. He said, three for Allah and the rest for something I have in my heart against you. And if he was sincere, he would have said, Ten for Allah. Yet, Uthman doesn't shed the blood of the believers. Because he knows it's a serious man. He knows it's serious. Because Uthman knows, even though he's the Khalifa, there is Aziz over him. There is Aziz over him. All these people who come out, to tell us how good they are, to, their, to tell their people how good they were to them. How many of them nasab al-fadl Allah? How many of them said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wafaqani li khidmatikum? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me the support for all these years, 30 years, 42 years, 23 years, to serve you. لا. إنما أتيته على علم عندي. They're just like Qarun. I was given it because of my knowledge. Uh, when people told him, uh, give from what Allah had given you. He said, I was given it because I'm smart. Because I'm intelligent. I'm a good businessman. How many of them say that? Remember that? Huh? We thought 70 billion was too much. 131 for one person? Yani he made Husni look like a midget. <laughs> Allah, yani after seeing this person, we're going to make ask Allah to forgive Husni. Yeah. <laughs> it changed. All he had is change compared to this guy. One person was reading it. His, one of his kids uh, comes to one of the islands down here, uh, close to Florida, or yani in the islands here, and one of the singers. Uh, I don't remember the name, curry or... All I know is curry chicken. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Mary curry? Yeah. Whatever. Uh, he, offered, he gives her one million dollars to sing in the party. One million dollars? You know how many Muslims that can feed? Taqullah. One of his kids playing in, in, in the soccer team, huh? In a soccer team in Europe, they, 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 they make fun of him. They let him play with them because he owns maybe half of the team. And they let him play in the last two minutes, right? Which team is that? Curry, two? No? All right. Curry Milan? No? Okay. 
They let him play for two minutes at the end of the game when it doesn't matter anymore. He takes the whole team with the management, with the players on a boat, and he gives each one of them a Benz. A Benz. It's people. Yeah, and subhanAllah, eight kids the guy had, none of them Rajulun Rashid. What you know, not one of them yeah, any wise. SubhanAllah. They may be good. Basala win fell at Musa. You know, it's like ma man shabha ma ma man shabha bah ma balam. Huh? Who comes out to be like his father, yeah, and he didn't do something uh, unfair. Look at the father. We yan show nashi ul fityani fin alamakana awadahu abuhu. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yani, Allah, if those people would have understand for a second of their life the meaning of Al-Aziz, they would not do what they're doing. Allah, they would not. You give whomever you want, you take it away. They don't understand. If they would understand that, then he'll know. That's it. Allah gave it to me for 42 years. Now he wants it back. End of the story. It will be so easy to give up. But those people think they are the highest. There is no higher than them. And they refuse to live like that. He can't imagine himself to be someone on top of him. Not knowing the poor guy, that everyone is on top of him. Because it's not here where it counts. It's there. It's there. He doesn't know that al aghniya and the rich people are the last to enter the Jannah. Huh? ويقول الله سبحانه وتعالى من كان يريد العزة فلله العزة جميعا You want the honor? It's with Allah Allah says all honor belongs to me So why you go seek it somewhere else? You don't trust Allah? You don't believe in the ayah in the book of Allah when Allah tells you all honor belongs to me You want status and honor and, and pride in this dunya? It's with me it belongs to me. All you see with what, what's in the hands of people, illusion. They think they have it, but they don't. I am telling you, Allah is telling you, it's with me. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense to seek honor from someone else. It doesn't just, it doesn't, I don't understand. People raising their hands and voices and, and uh, huh? uh, seeking Najah and the help and the safety and security from, the, from other than Allah. And wallahi, what's putting us in this position and condition that we are in today is because we are far from Allah. That's the bottom line. Not because Allah doesn't want to answer us. Not because Allah wants us to suffer. Because we don't deserve His support. فَلَمَّا هَانَ عَلَيْنَا هُنَّ عَلَيْهِ When he became of no importance to us, we became of no importance to him. وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِ الْقَوْمًا غَيْرَكُمْ It doesn't matter to Allah if you suffer 24-7. It's because of what you've done. Because of what you've done. وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٌ Don't say, why Allah is not giving us victory? Why Allah is not supporting? Why Allah is not saving? Why Allah is letting this people? It's one of the laws of Allah in this dunya. That once you have the truth and you shift away or you deviate away from His path, you're going to suffer. Because the only time you think or the only reason that makes you deviate and go away from Him when you have the truth, because you think there's something better. La. There's nothing better than other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or something better than Allah. Izza with, with Allah, all of it. If there are a hundred people here and one of them got money, one of them, one of them, everyone left his wallet, left his money in the car, at home, whatever, is poor, he's uh, broke, he's bankrupt, whatever. Only one person amongst us has money. And someone walks in and says, I need five dollars. Where are we going to send him? Send him to the person who doesn't have any or the person who does? That is what logic says. And we need, we got to start believing in the words of Allah. And Allah says, مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعِزَّةَ فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعٌ 
العزة فور الله all of it all of it الله سبحانه وتعالى ها doesn't say فلله العزة doesn't say من كان يريد العزة فلله العزة he doesn't say whoever wants honor then the honor is for Allah لا he emphasizes and he says جميع يعني all of it without exception all of it and whatever you see someone with honor it's because Allah had given it to him and it could be huh? it could be humiliation and could be a test but you because of your lack of understanding of what you see you think it's honor because no one has honor without Allah because Allah says it's with me and Allah will not give it to to those who disobey so you want to see how much honor someone someone has see how much he's close to Allah that's what this ayah means قُلْ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَ وَتَعَالَى الَّذِينَ يَتَّخِذُونَ الْكَافِرِينَ أَوْلِيَاءَ مِنْ دُونِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ يَبْتَغُونَ عِنْدَهُمُ الْعِزَّةِ حَانَ الله How these hearts and these mentalities are People who have the book of Allah You see the difference between reading the book of Allah and living the book of Allah those people who are into interfaith, dialogue, to the point where they compromise their principles and their deen. Why? So we can have good relationship, good rapport. We need to live. We, need, we are with them. We need to live. We need to go ahead and live it. So he's willing to compromise his deen for that. Oh? You're afraid of them? You don't trust that you can be fine without them? Obviously he does. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, huh? In this ayah, those who take the kafirin, awliya. He doesn't care. With the kafir, when he goes for the, for the meeting with the rabbi and with the priest, he's so mannered, so gentle with his words, with the smile, يعني, reaching his ears, the corners of his mouth, angel. Shaitan. With the Muslims, he doesn't stop criticizing, he doesn't he doesn't stop hammering them, he doesn't dare or he doesn't care if he if he drives them to jail. If he reports them, huh, throw them in jail, destroy families, drive parents crazy, walking on the street. But with the rabbi and the priest, wow. Why? Did he read the Quran? Those who take the kafirin awliya, not the believers, not the mu'mineen. Why? Allah says, is it because they think they can support you? Is it because they think they can give them of their honor? The honor all of it to me. The honor belongs to me. Allah said, they want, they're looking for honor. All the honor is with me. What kind of understanding is that? You give up your own family and your own brothers and your own sisters in the deen. To be cool on the same page with the rabbi and the priest. What's wrong with you? What kind of fundamental is that? What kind of principle is that? What kind of deen is that? قال الفخر الدين الرازي رحمه الله وعزة كل أحد بقدر علو رتبته في الدين. Now someone will ask, but how much honor do I have? I pray, I fast, I say la ilaha illallah. You say all the honor with Allah? Huh? The credit is Allah that gives. This honor belongs to Allah. Because Allah says that. فَإِنَّ الْعِزَّةَ لِلَّهِ جَمِيعًا 
So how much I have of that? طيب why Allah is giving too much honor to Qaddafi? How you figure? The question is how you figure? He's a president. He got 130 billion. Huh? He lives in a palace. He got power. Abdullah, who told you these things are honor? Who told you these things mean honor? That is indeed the mentality of communism. Huh? La ilah wa dinu madda. There is no God, and religion is material. Okay? Ma li qaisar, ma lillah lillah, wa ma li qaisar li qaisar. Who told you? Who told you because you got X amount of money and specific position, that is the honor in the eyes of Allah? Yeah, it's the honor in the eyes of most people these days. But who said most people are right? Who said the prince or the law of Allah on earth, that mo if most people agree on something, that means it got to be right? La. Allah makes it clear that it's opposite of that. وَمَا أَكْثَرَ النَّاسِ وَلَوْ حَرَصْتَ بِمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah makes it clear. It doesn't matter how much you're concerned to the Prophet. I said, most people will not believe. Most people will not believe. The Prophet وسلم, talks about Allah when he, when he tells Adam, huh? pick from your, your, from your lineage and from your offspring, خرج النار. Uh, the people of Hellfire, how many? 999 out of a thousand. Each thousand, 999, Kharajinna, will be in the Hellfire. 999. That's what? 99%? Or whatever. Do the calculation. Little less. But the point is, 999 out of a thousand. in the hellfire and yet you still think the honor is what most people agree to be honor who told you that who fooled you by that okay when you sit here you don't know how to do math when you're standing when you're sitting there <laughs> So the point is, we have to know exactly what determines the criteria of honor. And the best one to tell us about that is Allah. Why? Because He's the one who has it all. Have you ever seen someone who wants to do a business? will go to a homeless guy in the street to ask him for advice? Or will go to someone who was begging him the day before? Or he will go to someone who's known that every business he starts, he fails? No. Right? He'll go to someone who's successful, who has a business successful and running to ask him for advice. Allah has the greatest example. That's the same. Allah has the honor, so He's the one who has the right and the only one who has the right to say what it entails to be honored and what it entails not to be. So as a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear as Al-Fakhr al-Razi rahimahullah said. He said, you want to know how much honor someone has? See how much obedience to Allah he could have. فإنه كلما كانت هذه الصفة فيه أكمل كان وجدان مثله أقل وكان أشد عزة وأكمل رفعة. So you look how much obedience he has. The more you see he has obedience, then you have to know the less people like him. 
So the more, the more you see a person with obedience, you have to know that there are way less people with obedience at this level than this level. So the more he has, the less to find someone like him. The less chance to find someone like him. Yet he will be stronger, he will have more trust in Allah, he, ha he will have stronger will, and he will be mightier. وَلِهَذَا قَالْ تَعَالَى وَلِلَّهِ الْعِزَّةُ وَلِرَسُولِهِ وَلِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah says, Al-Izzah belongs to Allah. Because in the previous ayat, He said, all Izzah to Him. But here He said, for Allah, for the Messenger and for the believers. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has all the Izzah, when His Messenger and the believers obeyed Him, then He showered Him with some of His Izzah. And get him, subhanahu wa ta'ala, giving them so much izza does not decrease his izza, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yeah. Also, min asbab al izzati al afu wa al tawadu. Okay. Uh, Yaqul nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ma naqasat sadaqatun min mal. Money never decreases because of sadaq. Now, a lot of us know this hadith, but how many of us believe it? How many of us practice it? How many of us don't have a hard time following it? It's difficult. This hadith, really you can evaluate yourself. Wallah. Salah and zakah and siyam, great. But you want to really evaluate yourself, check this hadith. When is it you give and you never think that you got less money now? It's difficult. It takes a lot of time. Don't say I'm poor. Don't say I still don't have enough money. Don't say la. This character and this uh, manner is with you at every stage of your life. Once you get it. مَا قَلَّ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٌ Another hadith, the Prophet swears on that. Swears. مَا قَلَّ مَالٌ مِنْ صَدَقَةٌ وَمَا زَادَ اللَّهُ عَبْدًا بِعَفْوٍ إِلَّا عِزَّةٌ and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if someone, huh, if someone would forgive, Allah will give him more honor. But he forgives when he can. Doesn't forgive because he got no other option. And he's someone oppressing me. Someone comes and steals everything or, or takes everything from me. And he's holding the weapon to my head. You say, you know what? I forgive you. <coughs> or someone comes to you with the, you either forgive me or I throw you in jail. Or I shoot. I forgive you. No. He's on top and he forgives. Allah gives him more honor. So if you have in that position, and don't think like you got to be a president or a king to be able to, no. You can do that at your job. You can do that in your house. You can do that in the masjid. You can do that with a friend. You can do that with, you forgive. You know what? You harmed me. And I know I have the right to be upset, but I forgive. Do it. It's sweet. وَمَا تَوَاضَعَ أَحَدٌ لِلَّهِ إِلَّا رَفَعَهُ اللَّهِ And no one humble himself for Allah, but Allah should raise his status. Put him up. Huh? <coughs> the last thing uh, I want to share, but before that, uh, Al-Aziz also, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, describe his book, Al-Aziz. Look at that. Allah described the Quran, Al-Aziz. What you understand from that, beside the meaning, huh, as Allah says in the ayah after that, He said, لا يأتيه الباطل من بين يديه ولا من خلف. 
Tanzilum min Hakim in Hamid. But for Allah to describe His book, Al Aziz, that means if you are to follow this book, you should live with honor. This book should give you confidence. And anyway, this book is the words of Allah. And the words of Allah are one of the attributes of Allah. And anything belong to Allah is Al-Aziz. Last is sometimes we see in the Quran conjugation between Al-Aziz and Al-Alim. Yeah? It is something to reflect. I see a lot of yawning. Well, inshallah, we finish it at this. Al-Aziz uh, and Al-Alim. Al-Aziz uh, and Al-Hakim. Uh, why? Very important to see. The only way you get to understand why, if you look at the ayat where these expressions are mentioned, then you get to understand why. So I give you, yani, the examples that I was able to uh, collect. Huh? What happened? Bye. يَقُولُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ This expression mentioned eight times in Surah Al-Shu'ara when he talks about the stories of the Prophets. Aziz al-Rahim. As I said before, that most people will not believe. Most people will not believe. So they said the Aziz al-Rahim mentioning the stories of the Prophets, that is to indicate Aziz ala al-Kuffar, Rahim ala al-Mu'min. Because the stories talk about Prophets come to their people and they give a message. People, some people will believe, most people will not. So Allah ends these stories with وَإِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَهُ الْعَزِيزُ الرَّحِيمُ Al-Aziz, All-Powerful, Almighty, with those who disbelieve. All-Merciful with those who gonna believe. Alright? And wherever you find Al-Aziz Al-Rahim, it will come with this format. Because a lot of people say, how do I remember when I memorize? Aziz Rahim, Aziz Hakim, Aziz Alim. Huh? That's how it is. You have to look at the context. In the other, يعني, Al-Aziz Al-Alim. Usually, Al-Aziz Al-Alim is mentioned in the context when Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala talks about the creation. Especially the universe. Huh? Because people will say, طيب Al-Aziz, because Allah is all-powerful, He can create all that. Huh? He can create uh, this space. He can create earth, people, creation. Huh? We can't even imagine. So how can he control them? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will follow Al-Aziz with Al-Alim. Al-Alim, all knowledgeable. So it doesn't matter how much he creates or you see that he created. Huh? He's still knowledgeable and controlling everything. So usually when it comes to that, to the creation, you will find Al-Aziz Al-Alim. I give you example. قال الله تعالى والشمس تجري لمستقر لها ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم. Okay. ويقول الله سبحانه وتعالى فقضاهن سبع سماوات في يومين وأوحى في كل سماء أمرها وزينا السماء الدنيا بمصابيح وحفظا ذلك تقدير العزيز العليم. So when he talks about his creation سبحانه وتعالى and how vast it is. You will come to your head. Okay, he created. Can he control it? So right away he, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's, yeah, he's all powerful to create, but he's all knowledgeable to control. So nothing is outside his control, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing. He can create whatever he wants, yet because of his knowledge of everything, he still can control it. Some of us, he might have control over an office, two offices, three offices, but when it gets bigger than that, an employee, two employees, three, when they get more, then he loses it. That's the reality. We're limited. Yeah? 
يعني الخليفة العباسي سنس تو تو طارق بن زياد ها وين دي ستارت يعني جيتنج ديب ان الاندلس ان سبين برتغال جيتنج سو ديب ها هي اوردر ديم تو ستوب ستوب بيكوز ناو يو سبريد سو ماتش يو جو سو ثين اوكي يو جينا اوبن اند ليف 200 جايز 200 بيبل يو جينا كولابس يو انديرستاند بس الله سبحانه وتعالى ات دازنت That's why when he talks about his creation and the universe specifically, the heavens and the earth, he will put Al-Aziz Al-Alim. Al-Aziz Al-Alim. But Al-Aziz Al-Hakim, usually Al-Aziz Al-Hakim comes, Al-Aziz, we already know what it means, Al-Hakim, all wise. Usually it comes with the ayat of al-Tashri' and the ayat of al-Adab. The ayat where their laws and ayat and ahkam and ayat where there is punishment. Allah give you example. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى والسارق والسارقة فقطعوا أيديهما بما كسبا نكالا من الله. ها والله عزيز حكيم. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says the thief, man and woman, you cut their hand. بما كسب نكالا من الله because of what they've committed uh, punishment from Allah والله عزيز حكيم طيب الله العزيز ordered this طيب what's the point we're gonna have a crippled community because that's how some people think if you're gonna cut the hand of everyone who steals we're gonna يعني, we will not find people to work everyone gonna walk without a hand لا so they question the حكمة of Allah So Allah tells them, I'm Hakim too. I'm Aziz, I can order that, but I'm Hakim too. I know why I'm doing it. I have all the wisdom to do it and I know it's a solution. Look, when this law of Allah was completely deactivated or inactivated, what happened? The thieves are everywhere. And they don't steal anymore with intelligence. They're greedy. They steal and they don't care. 131 billion? <laughs> Dude, you want to steal? Steal 70. 131? Subhanallah. Huh? Yeah, you like our beloved Egyptian brothers. Huh? Give it to Kizba. من كبرها. They say how you know the lie? How you know that what I just told you is a lie? He said it's huge. يعني you want a lie? Make يعني rational lie. Huh? Don't come and tell me. يعني I just saw an elephant going down US one. Where where you got the elephant from? Tell me a horse. Huh? Tell me a goat. Elephant. You know. So the point is. Allah, so they will say, so you're going to cut the hands of everyone? Why you have to think that everyone going to steal? That's the first question. Why many people should steal in the first place? All right? And look throughout the Islamic history, how many people got their hands cut off? This hukum of Allah, for the thieves to be, to, for their hands to be cut off. How many throughout the Islamic history, go read in the books, and come out with the number. If these things happen so calmly, they will be mentioned. Rarely happen. And of course there is rules and restrictions for this to happen. Someone who steals to eat because the ruler is not providing for him, he, this ruler cannot establish the, the had on him. Someone who steals because he will die from hunger, Or he will die freezing because he got no clothes. You as a ruler, responsible to provide for him. So you're going to establish the head on him. And you did not provide for him the sustenance? Very important. So there. So when Allah gives the laws, he will finish it. Al-Aziz, Al-Hakim. Don't question the law of Allah. Huh? Today what they do when someone steals? Huh? Throw him in jail for three days, for ten days. 
when the people rule against Allah's law, they will suffer. They will suffer, wallah. Because they don't know what to do. There is a case now, I don't know in which state, where uh, a girl, uh, 12 I think, 12 years old, she gave hard time for, uh, gave hard time to her mom or her mother or whatever. Huh? Yeah, and the judge put her in detention center for three, juvenile detention center for three months. Uh, يعني, that's a good judge. Yani, he wants to discipline these kids because they're spoiled. But you don't put her with people who uh, God knows what they did. And another kid, the same thing because he had a pair. You know the paper that the the joint, huh? They wrap the marijuana with. He had an empty paper. He was just يعني, acting. So he put him in the detention center. The kid comes out, kills himself. Why? And then yet they find that this judge has received over the past few years over a million dollars from juvenile centers to admit these kids to the detention because their budget, their funding depends on, the, on the, how many kids they got. Look at that. Okay? So it's very important. It's very important. يعني, when you have the law of Allah, oh, Allah, this is difficult. How can you cut the hands and cr- la? Allah tells you, I'm al-Hakim, I know what I'm doing. Alright? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In tu'adhibhum fa innahum ibad. Wa in taghfir lahum fa innaka anta al-Aziz al-Hakim. Aziz al-Hakim. Huh? Aziz al-Hakim. If you punish, that's what Isa will tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. If you punish them, they're your servants. And if you forgive them, then anta al-Aziz al-Hakim. Fa innaka anta al-Aziz al-Hakim. You are Al-Aziz Al-Hakim. We say that Al-Aziz Al-Hakim comes with the punishment because Allah, because someone will say, man, how can Allah punish us? Yani he created us and he brought us to this world and he put us into these difficulties and he sent the temptations to me and he brought this beautiful woman in my way and he brought these drugs in my way and he got me to, to commit zina and he got me to steal and he got me to deal with riba and he brought me to America and I had to do this and I had to do that and I had to stop praying so I cannot lose my job and I had to change my name and I had to deal with riba so I can buy a car and a house and this and that how can he punish me? really? So Allah tells you, don't worry about it. He's Al-Aziz to punish, mu- to punish you, and he's Al-Hakim all-wise. He knows why he's doing it. So don't question what Allah will do to you. Al-Aziz can do whatever he wants, and Al-Hakim will not do anything. Because you see, when there's Al-Aziz, when someone Al-Aziz, without hikmah, what does he do? He oppress. He oppress. All these people huh, that we see in our countries and all, the, all, all over the world now, it becomes a fashion now, huh? the, ma, the, the moda. Huh? They, have, they think they have izza and to the mainstream people it's izza. Because we said why pe- most people will look at izza to be. Money and wealth and position and throne and all that. But they got no hikmah. So what they end up doing? Oppressing their people. So Allah al-Aziz al-Hakim, huh? He will judge you and He will not oppress you. He will punish you and He would not oppress you. Alright? Very important. And the Prophet ﷺ used, has many du'a and the Quran teaches us many du'a where this name Al-Aziz is mentioned. Very important to reflect on this point. And I give you example. يقول الله سبحانه وتعالى ربنا لا تجعلنا فتنة للذين كفروا واغفر لنا إنك أنت العزيز حكيم. واغفر لنا فتنة عداء إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم ويقول الله سبحانه وتعالى ربنا وابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم آياتك ويعلمهم كتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت عزيز الحكيم ها عزيز الحكيم عند الرافض صلى الله عليه وسلم يوسف سي لا إله إلا الله الواحد القهار ها رب السماوات والأرض وما بينهما العزيز الغفار Aziz, always remember, especially when you're in a hardship. When you're in a hardship, you feel like the whole world is against you. Then you remember that al-izza for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you know what? 
I will be closer to Allah, Allah is with me, I'm with Allah, and that's all power. So even if the whole world against me, Allah with me, that's enough. So always the dua of the darar, huh? the dua of hardships, you find this Al Aziz. Yaqul Nabi Sallam, Ida Shtakaita, Fada Yadaka Haithu Tashtaki. If you feel pain, huh? If something hurting you, the Prophet Sallam says, put your hand on that spot. Huh? Your back hurts, your neck hurts, your head hurts. Put your hand on that st in that spot. Waqul Bismillah. أعوذ بعزة الله ها أعوذ بعزة الله وقدرته من شر ما أجد من وجع هذا ثم ارفع يدك ثم أعد وترى بسم الله أعوذ بعزة الله وقدرته مما أجد من وجع هذا ثم ارفع يدك وأعد ذلك وترى that's what you say بسم الله in the name of Allah I seek refuge in the honor of Allah and in the ability of Allah from what I, the pain I find. Huh? And you ask Allah with His honor to protect you from this pain, then you take your hand off where you put it, then you put it back on the same spot and you repeat witra, an odd number, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. So this is briefly some of the meaning and some of the benefits we gain from the name Al-Aziz. أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد جزاكم الله خير السلام عليكم ورحمة الله